Hello, everybody, and welcome to Book It Vince, the wrestling dream match podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Martin Bennett. And with me, as always, is the Prince of Perversion, Anthony Hall. Oh, God. Who is the Prince of Perversion? Do you uh, want me to give you their I, other nickname that might help? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank the, you. But the bizarre one. Oh, Goldust. And it's there because that yes. has something to do with our episode today. But yes, the per, the Prince of Perversion, the bizarre one, Gold Dust. Ooh. <laughs> Damn, now I got to get a good Gold Dust background for all of our YouTube viewers. Yeah, it, well, hopefully not something that's a little, in, hopefully not an inappropriate one. Although Gold Dust never... It's hard. if Brit on that he he rode that line and it was great. But yes, if you want to come and watch the video version so you can see Anthony's weird backgrounds, you can do so. Uh, but <laughs> if you want to follow, if you like what we do here on Book It Vince, every week we book a brand new dream match that either may never happen or could happen in the future. We don't know. Uh, you can do so by following us or subscribing to the podcast on podcast apps all around the globe. Or by coming and watching the YouTube version on our YouTube channel. Um, so, Anthony. I got... Oh, all the different faces of gold dust. I do like that. that actually looks really good. I love that. that actually is really cool. Excellent. Um, I'm the biggest gold dust. Oh, <laughs> look at the husband. I'm the gold dust. <laughs> uh, so, this one was... Um, <laughs> Not something I came up with, but it was a part of a conversation that we had on Twitter. Uh, if you want to follow the podcast on Twitter, you can do so by looking up Book It Vince Pod. Mm. Uh, this was a conversation with someone who uh, it came apart because of uh, Christian showing up on AEW. Yes. And they mentioned that, oh, we were really close with our uh, when we booked Edge versus Kenny Omega. Yes. And we we're like, oh, we were so close. We were one. We were uh, one brood member off. And yeah. uh, and they said, don't worry that you still have a chance for Gangrel to show up in AEW. And so oh. uh, the user, the user is Panas or Panas zero four three. Um, A.K.A. Richie, who, who you uh, actually recommended the life. matchup yeah. of. Of the Hurricane versus Orange Cast. Shout out to you, Richie. But so I asked them, who would Gangrel face if he went to AEW? So mm. today's episode, we're going to dream book the feud between Gangrel and Gold Dust, or Dustin Rhodes, however you want to call him, uh, the four decade long veteran. Um, been he's been wrestling for 40 Ugh. years he's he's wrestled in the 80s the 90s the 2000s and uh now the uh oh no I, yeah the 80s the 90s early 2000s 2010s and now 2020s wild Jeez. what a wild career this man has had but so Just i had a story uh, career i had to look up uh, if they've wrestled before, because the you know, if you we kind of just mentioned you know Dustin Rhodes' career, you know, famous as we said, Gold Dust in the WWE for so long, um, son of the American Dream, Dusty mm. Rhodes. Uh, they did wrestle on a few occasions, from what I found. Oh, they have. From what I found, um, Gangrel versus Dustin Runnels, which is his real name, that was yes. a Sunday Night Heat match um, in 98. There is also uh, Gangrel versus Gold Dust uh, in 99 at a w at WWF Shotgun Saturday. There's another uh, <laughs> event nickname to bring back. 
Shotgun Saturday. There was also a thing. I didn't watch the full video, but there's also Gangrel versus Val Venus, and then it was the return of Goldust. So they've had a few bouts here or there, but you know the 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 dream booking was Gangrel Gangrel returning. <laughs> Gangle. Gang, Gangle. Gangrel. Gangrel returning. <laughs> Gangrel returning to AEW to face. The natural Dustin Rhodes. So, you know, yeah, my first impression when I thought of this was, uh, I don't know if it want if we want like it's obviously two old timers. We'll say they're not getting mm. any younger. Mm. It would probably lead to a cinematic match, I would imagine. Mm. But imagine, but but at the same time, I will say this: at the same time, they both can still go. Gangrel does do indie like spots and oh. wrestles. And obviously Dustin is still wrestling because, you know, he's had great matches at uh yes. while in AEW, I mean him versus Cody, obviously. Um oh, what a beautiful match. What a beautiful what what beautiful storytelling in that match. Uh and boy were they fucking bloody. Oh, oh yeah. Bloody boys. Um, but then you got the bunkhouse match or whatever the hell that was called, where it was the butcher oh, and the blade versus Dustin yeah. and QT Marshall. That and was like, awesome. That and was, that was an awesome match. It's essentially a hardcore match. And like, and yes, uh, yes. And yeah, uh, uh, Dustin did like a bunch of spots in that match. So he can still go. You know, it's, it's, it's not a question of can you still wrestle? So it's like, what would be the inciting action of. Why would why would Gangrel want to fight with Dustin? And the only thing that come up that could come to my mind is like it's this thing mm. of maybe Gangrel thinks that Dustin has gotten soft, or maybe like yeah, I think something I, like that is is good. Or maybe it's a thing of like Gangrel wants to bring back the weirdness from from him, and they like and he like teases the whole gold dust thing. Everybody knows like gold dust, but like he teases mm. it, and, and maybe he like he's keeps like, ref maybe he keeps yeah, referring to like him as man. maybe he keeps referring to him as Goldie. Yeah, like those sorts of things where it's like it's clearly a callback to that, and maybe this is a great way for Dustin to kind of like put that part of his career like finally to rest or whatever mm, mm. you know yeah okay yeah i like that i what like you i like gangrel like i like him showing up in AEW like full brood like just like <laughs> he's wearing his like flowy white shirt he's got the sunglasses on he's his his mouth is dripping blood he's got a fucking like chalice with some some questionable red liquid in it um, and he's and he he like he redebuts like maybe on like an episode of Dynamite or Dark or something like that. And you're like, oh shit, it's Gangrel. Um, and I think he should challenge like for the TNT Championship just like immediately, like and then, um, and then he'll lose, and it'll be like, oh no, Gangrel. Well, it was fun having him, and then you see like an interaction with him and Dustin, like they they like walk. Like just by each other, and well, and Gangrel is just like, mm. well, because Gangrel made uh, a guest appearance on AEW. He was in the he was in the um, the match between Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara on at the right. uh, compound. He him yes. and him and uh, Hurricane Helms Hurricane. showed up for yeah. for a quick bit. <laughs> yes. But this time he's back, you know, he's really, he's really back. And yeah, I, I, I like this, the idea of like them um, crossing paths backstage and Dustin Rhodes, obviously he doesn't have any of his makeup on. He's just kind of in his civilian clothes. Maybe he's wearing like a nightmare factory track jacket. He's, he's ushering in one of the young talents to go to their match and Gangrel just like stops and, it's like somebody that he used to know just walked past him, but he's different. He's changed. So Gangrel is just like, and you get this like very interesting moment with Gangrel being like, this is someone who's lost their way. 
Yeah. So, and, and it's like someone that I, I used to know that is now, but a stranger, a shell of themselves. So it combines both of these things that you were saying, like about him being, him thinking that Dustin is soft, plus him like wanting to bring out the weird. Because Gangrel has no allies in AEW. Mm-hmm. As if we like, if we really think about it, like sure, Matt Hardy, but he's not the same Matt Hardy that was in that match. He's big money Matt now. So Gangrel, who's he going to get? Christian is about to, or yeah, Christian Cage is about to face Kenny Omega for the title. He doesn't have time to play brood games. I think, I think there, I think, I think there would just be a fun moment where like, like they pass by each other and it's just an acknowledgement of like, yeah, we, yeah, the brood, like the uh, Christian, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, exactly. Um, I think maybe, yeah, you, you could have that moment where like he just like, a little bit of fan he sees service. Christian. Yeah, he, he sees he sees Christian. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he sees Dustin and, and is someone who who is he's unrecognizable. You're like, what? Hmm. So I think then Dustin has to have a match on Dynamite, or he has to have he might be ringside with like somebody from the Nightmare Factory, like some prospect or some shit, and Gangrel has to interfere. Or just up here. Um, he maybe does he maybe he doesn't have to like beat up on Dustin immediately, but he just has to pop up. And and then it causes a distraction and whomever is in the ring loses and and Dustin is just confronts Gangrel and is like, What what are you doing? Like what's what is this? You would just cost, you know, somebody who is just starting their career out, uh one of a match like on on their big one of their biggest shots in their early career like what are you doing and then gang girl's just like what are you doing right <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like where where's the where's the care like, where's the magic yeah I, I i think i think what would make this rivalry so interesting is it's this thing of like one sort of legend to another legend being like you've you know you've lost your step you've lost your touch you've lost what's made you special and it's like Mm -hmm. like yeah the magic's gone like um i think it's of course yeah and uh before before we continue of course we know that he probably can't be gold dust in AEW because wwe owns the rights to that character or to that name or that all of those things but spend your disbelief listeners for we are here at book of like that or age or in ring ability yeah i i think um i think more than anything like what you could probably get away with is things like uh just ref references because they do it all the time in AEW. but i think like if you got like little references like here and there where i think it's like i think it's like i don't see the i don't see the glitter i don't see a glimmer or a glitter or sparkle like that sort of thing like calling them goldie would be funny and yeah and like, yeah, yeah you have all these little things and like the hints to like the like what his character used to do like i think mm-hmm. those would be really cool just as little like reminders to like the fans who like really remember really remember like uh, you know how great Dustin Rhodes is I think then like this is a great showcase that can then like really propel like maybe to push Dustin into like a TNT title pitcher because I don't think he's challenged for I think he may be challenged for the TNT title once. I don't know. Maybe. But, but like, I think, yeah, I think it's this thing of just like a passing, starts off as like a passing glance. It's like, oh, Gangrel's in A, Gangrel is in AW. This is great. And then, yeah, it's this passing thing. And then Gangrel yeah. interferes with Dustin and it becomes sort of like war of words. Mm-hmm. Just on, I mean, I think it's more on Gangrel's side where he like is clearly targeting Dustin as a thing of you've you've lost your touch, but then Dustin like 
doesn't necessarily, he's never been like the perfect, like, promo person, even though he's a very good promo. Um, but it's just more of like, it, maybe it just like makes his blood boil too much where he just like loses it and goes crazy. Oh, and, and then him him losing his mind is what reverts him back to gold dust. Oh, I don't think it reverts him back to gold dust. I think it's more <laughs> like he, he kind of like unleashes himself, unleashes on Gangrel. And this is exactly mm. what Gangrel wants. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. It's and like then you lose your anger. And you could have like Cody, you could have like Lee Johnson. Like, mm, yeah, come out and try to hold him back. And then maybe like maybe Dustin, like, you know, I, I like not on purpose, like uh, hits Lee Johnson. And then you could have like Cody come out and be like, what's going on? Like, what's going on with you? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then it's kind of this thing of like, I don't know who I am anymore. Like that sort of thing. Yeah. And I, and I really would like this uh, journey to include like Dustin being like, you have everything. You're still young. You're in this prominent position. And I know you're my brother, but I look at you and I, I feel, I feel jealous. I feel like I'm, I haven't achieved what I need to achieve, especially here in this company. And he's just like, he's just really going through it. He's very lost in himself. This is like midlife crisis, Dustin Rhodes. <laughs> or, yeah, and he's, kind of. and he's just like, he, yeah, he, maybe he's, he starts, uh, Cody's like, well, maybe you just need to like get your confidence back. I'm going to book you in some more, some matches on dark matches on dynamite. And then maybe he just keeps losing, you know, Dustin Rhodes, just like, there's just something missing. You know? He's, he can't, he can't find it, but then he starts tapping into his gold dust isms. Um, maybe he starts getting in more low blows. Like I think the I think the thing that would like really revert him back is like maybe he's losing and he sets up somebody for the shattered dreams and he like does it and he's just like mm-hmm. yeah. and he and he like he feels it again and then it's like oh my god what's happening here and all of this has been Gangrel's master plan to like to basically break down Dustin so that Gold Dust can come back and that he'll have this ally, this 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 weird enigma to be able to uh partner with and to to take the tag team scene by storm. Yeah, you could really have this like great moment in the ring or something where like maybe like uh a Dustin turns on say the the only person I can really think of is Lee Johnson um, because it's a <laughs> great QT. Uh, QT right now is kind of starting to become a heel, and so right, he's already right. he's already sort of turned on. So current with current storylines, it doesn't really work. I mean, if QT was more of a face, it would definitely work with him. I kind of think like Lee Johnson being like super baby face, like it right. really works with him, um, and also like his lack of experience. Like it's okay if he like. Well, what was I think? What was it? Uh, the last like thing I saw about Lee Johnson was like he lost for his entire first year in AEW. <laughs> well, yeah, and he wasn't really even supposed to be signed in the first place. I think, but then he it joined was like during the. the yeah, yeah, it was like it was like during the during the uh, beginnings of the pandemic where they like really just needed a- anybody to be there to wrestle. Yeah. But then he joined he the Nightmare up. family, and and so then they started training him and getting him better and, yeah. and all that stuff. But and now so, he's all elite. Now he's signed proper. But so I think like maybe like Dustin does something to Lee, and it kind of like breaks Dustin down, and then Gangrel comes out and he delivers this like really like creepy promo of like I'm the only one who understands you around here. I'm the only one who can help free you from this turmoil or from, or from this, this nightmare that you live in. Oh yeah. From this nightmare. Uh, you see, cause nightmare family. Nightmare. Okay. I see what you're, I see what you're putting down, but I think I like like that. I think then what comes to like the ultimate right now, we're just kind of like talking about like the story projection and stuff. I think what then Mm. comes to like be like the main like climax has got to be where Gangrel tries to force gold or sorry, Dustin to do something 
Uh, and it's that thing of like, you have to make a choice. Either you do this and you're full baddie, or you do the good thing. And I think he does the good thing and turns on and, and like, you know, uh, defends himself. And then that's where it's like, truly then is the Gangrel versus Dustin Rhodes. Like, yes, um, but my, my question is, is, um, him turning face. Does that mean that gold dust doesn't reappear or does it just mean that face gold dust reappears? Or is gold dust just not in the equation at all? I don't think gold is in the equation of all just because I think legal le- legally he can't <laughs> legally he cannot. But but let's but let's say that legal rules don't matter. Like let's say that the trademark uh, for Goldust's name and image um, is think, you know becomes available. I think that you could do something like that with Dustin's current like iteration of how he presents himself. Like mm. right now he does the half face paint. Yeah. Clearly yeah. to be this thing of like, like I actually, when Dustin showed back, like showed up in AEW and he's, and he presented himself, like he still wears the full body, uh, the suit. suit. Yeah. He still paints his face, but he only paints half his face, which is kind of like a really cool trademark mm. now because it's clear about like, Yes, I am Dustin Rhodes, but I'm also have this history that everybody knows about the gold dust history. Mm-hmm. So like I can't be one without the other. It's that sort of dichotomy. And I think maybe uh, like maybe when Gangrel's kind of got his like his is when he's got his fangs into him. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> um, ooh. I think when you have when he's like in that, maybe he comes out still dressed how he is. They don't yeah. call him gold dust. They call him Dustin Rhodes, but he all of a sudden has this gold suit and he half his face and it is the face paint that he does wear is gold and black. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see. So he's like, yeah, this is as he's like starting to get, get in touch with his past and the, the person that made him, you know, this, uh, basically legendary superstar. These, mm-hmm. all these aspects that, that made him the wrestler that he was. Um, oh yeah, to the point where he he comes out and his suit is is gold again, and it has the half mask and maybe even like some drawings, like yeah, some kinda, similar like, illustrations as as what we have in uh, my uh, my background here. Maybe half of his face is just like one of those, and it's like oh, yeah, like the classic sort of stylings that he used to wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, but I think like I think like you it's more of a nod to wrestling fans than it is like straight up. Like, cause I think wrestling fans now like know who Goldust is, but if they don't, Mm -hmm. it's the thing where you can't, you don't really want to just sit and explain it. You know, it's a thing where I think if they do like one of those road to like every like pay-per-view, every big like event, they do the road to specials where they like interview like Mm -hmm. Shivani and JR and Excalibur and other people. I think within those, Within those, you could you could have them recall Gold Dust, yeah. but not by name. But I because I like that I like that separation of WWE and AEW, where it's like we acknowledge the past, but we're not going to like specifically show it, or we're not going to specifically do it. It's like, but yeah. they can talk about how like the the long standing history of of Dustin Rhodes as Gold Dust is a big deal. But then I think like you could. I think what they could do is they could call mention like JR can call mention to like how Gangrel is truly is really trying to bring out this side of Dustin that he has like long forgotten or or that he's like tried to move away from and he's tried to become yeah. his own person instead of this character like it's it's yeah, about he, like he's like yeah like uh, JR probably like uh, there's uh, this character uh this this weirdness of Dustin, uh, his entire career was predicated on being strange, and no one took him seriously. But now that he's here in AEW, uh, he's finding himself. But King be- Grell wants to pull him back to the weird. Yeah, it'd be. <laughs> Dustin wants to be his own man. <laughs> he doesn't be his own man. 
Dustin trying to find after after forty plus years of experience in his career, he's finally at a place where he's trying to be his own man. And Gangrel clearly wants clearly wants to bring him back to his dark days. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, it's like I, I, I saw dark. I saw Dustin at his darkest uh, yep. form back, <laughs> back, back in uh, at previous iterations of his career, and now he's trying to find the light. But Gangrel is trying to pull him back, <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. And, and that's trying, um, to pull, trying to pull him back. <laughs> to pull, pull, pull him back. Uh, that's that's our uh, one hundred out of one hundred Jim Ross impersonations here at Book of Vince. Oh, that's um, great. Give us some tips. Give us some tips and tricks. So, uh, send us a video of you doing your best Jim Ross impersonation I mean, so that we can be cool. shamed. <laughs> but yeah, so like Jim Ross, think, give us some tips. How can we be you? <laughs> but so I, I, yeah, I think like that's the trajectory of where it's going to go. But so I guess what we should do is then we should um, mm-hmm. like kind of plan it. So yeah, it, it's it starts out just very simply. You want to introduce Gangrel back into you know, the kind of know-how of what's this current wrestling fandom where people will go, oh, Gangrel, and people are like, Who the f- he's a yeah. vampire? <laughs> That's probably the biggest yes. hurdle to he, get through. He is, is a vampire. He's a vampire? Um, <laughs> so you, you introduce him, and I think it is this thing of like, yeah, I think if you say have someone like Darby Allen, uh, as TNT champion and now at the time of recording this Darby has talked about bringing back like the TNT champion open challenge sort of thing Mm. so that could be interesting because I mean that's how you had a lot of current AEW stars kind of get introduced slash there was a lot of indie people that have been featured uh, through that when Cody Mm -hmm. was doing it Um, Mm -hmm. but so imagine how weird it would be if he's like, I'm Darby Allen and I'm a, uh, I want to do a, a TNT champion open challenge. I'll face anybody, uh, uh, new, old, uh, anyone. <laughs> new, old, vampire. Uh, and just, yeah, just, I don't care who you are, I'll face you. And then all of a sudden, friggin'. <laughs> <laughs> gang grill i'm trying down. to remember i'm trying to remember their music but it was the weirdest music for the brood to have at the time i think it'd be funny if he's like i'll face any i'll face anybody a man woman i don't care about crispy poppables okay <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm pulling up the i'm pulling up the the theme song just because i really want to hear it again so you can so remind yourself Oh, I'll uh, slowly talk over it so that uh, we do not get flagged for any sort of copyright. You know, you just this is it's the like music. that old sort of it's like that old sort of like piano where it's like do 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 do, and then I think it gets into if that's how I remember it. I don't know. It'd be awesome if if like yeah, Darby was just like I'll face anybody, man. Woman, beast, vampire. <laughs> um, oh, man, man, woman, beast, monster, and then the lights go off. It's a bit. We we do this all the fucking time, obviously here at Book of Vince, but um, the the arena is pitch black, and then we do some like really ugly like fiend light, like where it's all red. Yeah, and and then you you like see like you hear the 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 beginnings of the theme, and then. You, the title card comes up over the name is like on the Titan Tron. It's like gang grail. It's like his name, but it's stylized as like dripping blood. And, mm-hmm. and then he comes out and he's Classic, like Classic ah. white puffy shirt, yeah. slick back white puffy hair, shirt, glasses, slick back hair, fangs, gob- goblet, sunglasses. Yeah. He's like, ah. <laughs> and then you have Tony Schiavone. And it's gang grail. <laughs> My God, What's it's he- gang grail. What's he doing here? <laughs> What's Gangrel doing in the impact zone? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that, but yeah, you have you have <laughs> you have him come down and him and Darby sort of square up, and it's like it's just such a weird thing where I, I my guess is it's just like 
I mean, you could have like JR being like, you know, I haven't seen Gangrel wrestle in over 20 years, or I don't know. I, I, he's definitely wrestled the, on the yeah, Indies, yeah, but like yeah, since yeah. his time in WWE, it's like, I haven't seen him wrestle in like 15 years or whatever. I don't know. But like, and again, and then JR's J- mm. like, it's like, he has a day today. And then Excalibur's like, it's because he's a vampire. Yep, that's perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's a vampire, JR. It's because it's he's a vampire. <laughs> he's a vampire. That's not real. I thought, it's real. I've seen him drink blood. He's got a goblet of blood right now. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Yeah, but definitely. Then the match kicks off, of course, and I, Darby wins. He must. Um, but then, yeah, Gangrel is, you know, every, everybody's like, you still got it. <laughs> or whatever you know uh and then he he walks backstage and that's where we get this moment of him he sees christian and they're like he's like my brother uh they they embrace they do whatever they they need to do he he gives him his blessing and and his best wishes in his uh upcoming feud with kenny omega and then he continues walking and sees I think, uh, dustin road i even think just straight up passing look at each other acknowledge each other fist bump that's all you get that's all you need okay that's, yeah that's sure good, let's that's do that. good enough fan service to everybody where it's like because they're the brood if you didn't know you know, you didn't like, know. Oh. <laughs> or maybe they both put on sunglasses at the same time <laughs> boom this yeah they acknowledge each other and then <laughs> both put on sunglasses <laughs> But so um, I think then, yeah, it's it's the thing. The thing with AEW is they're not huge on like the like set up backstage like, oh, we're filming a random interaction like they, they're they very much more sportsy when it comes to like like set up interview like we need to get a couple of words, you know, or or it's like, oh, there's suddenly this thing happening backstage. We need a camera back there. It's not really this thing of like it suddenly shows up and there's just a person like standing there and goes like, oh, hi there. Uh, <laughs> Moxley. Yeah. Let's talk as if there's no camera here. Like they don't do that. Like it's because they acknowledge the thing of like there's always a camera there. There's yeah. always a camera. <laughs> but this is just this is just they're following Gangrel like back to the locker room or back to his uh, secret vampire lair after he's, he's lost. So they're like tracking him and they're they're waiting for him to get interviewed by fucking uh, Dasha or some shit. And and he like walks past Christian Cage, gets the quick little acknowledgement and then walks past Dustin Rhodes, who is preparing one of his uh Nightmare Factory uh, prospects, and and then that's when that moment happens. He's like, it's like, it's kind of like an on the way to thing where he's like, he's going to the interview, and it's like the, but then he comes, you know. Then it could he also, goes. yeah, it could also be even like a like backstage interview or something with uh, Dustin and like maybe Lee Johnson, and then and then that's where like Gangrel like interjects or something. He just walks past. He just he doesn't even say anything. He's just what, like, I know, I, think what, I know you. <laughs> I know. You. I think. Oh, oh, what if it was the line of like. um, um. Yeah, maybe we're getting too in the weeds of like how it happened. It's just like trying to figure out like a great way of like doing it very subtly that then also <laughs> like really pays off without trying to like really force it. And it's hard because AEW is not about like those sorts of moments like if it mm-hmm. was out on stage it'd be so much more impactful where it's like maybe gangrel's leaving as then dustin's coming out but at the same time you want to have like the the moment like where they kind of talk to each other where i think where like dustin would probably be like um uh it's good to like saying like it's good to see you. or even or even if like gangrel was like do you recognize me? And Dustin's yeah. like, and, oh. Dustin, and Dustin's like, yeah, and yeah, uh, like, yeah, girl, it's great to see you. Uh, great job out there. And then Gang Girl's like, funny, I don't seem to recognize you. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Or maybe, even yeah, if, but maybe, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even if he says like, or even if he says like, um, uh, I'll be seeing you around, Goldie. You know. 
like hinting towards things and yeah that sort of stuff yeah maybe yeah maybe it's just like they do that that crossover when the next match happens and he's leaving and he's just like he's like he's like oh uh do you recognize me and he just like he just says that to him and he's like yes yeah it's good to see you he's like because i don't recognize the person who's standing in front of me i'll see you later goldie and it's like oh okay Bit sexy, a little bit sexy, but we'll see. We'll see what's going. We'll see what's going on. A little bit sexy, a little, a little bit sexy, um, and then yeah, of course, yeah. I, I do, but I do like um, that after that interaction, Dustin goes on to have some matches at Dark and on Dynamite, where Gangrel is just kind of hovering around, and he's and he's losing. You know, he's he's losing, and he's he can't seem to find himself, and and. We'll call this midlife crisis it's the midlife the midlife crisis storyline where <laughs> Co- Cody's like, "What's going on, Dustin? Like, you know, what's what what's with you late?" I think and, then I think you gotta have yeah. then so like yeah he loses a couple times, um they can like he can do that on like dark or elevation, and mm. then you have like him come back on dynamite and face someone maybe it's like Ethan Page or someone, um. And you have uh, you can have the commentary team mention how like Dustin's kind of on like a losing streak. Gangrel should be on commentary. That'd be weird, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it'd be good. Mm-hmm. That'd be weird, but he's it'd on, be good. He's on commentary for that match, and he's he's talking about how he doesn't recognize this person in the ring. They've lost their magic. There's something missing. You know, there's a, there's that- no there's no spark. I think then what you do is then, like, if it's Ethan Page, he beats Goldust. I keep saying yeah. Goldust. He beats Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> it's because your background's Goldust. <laughs> so I just keep thinking about that. So he beats Dustin, right? And then mm-hmm. Gangrel grabs the mic, goes to the ring, and there's Dustin on the ground, like, trying to get up, and Gangrel just gets over top of him and starts, like, I, I don't know if he starts yelling at him, but he's basically being like, who are oh. you? Yeah, Who, are I like you, that. Who are you, Goldie? Who are you, Goldie? You <clears throat> used to have dreams, but now they're shattered. Ooh, that's fan service. You live in a nightmare, you know? and and maybe that can be a, a, a line later or something where he's like, "You live in a nightmare, and I'll help you awaken to be yeah. your true self," or something like that. And yeah, like, yeah, and and maybe maybe he just like. I think the way you incite like this to become a feud is he like he, he like yells at him, says like "Who are you? You're not the man I used you, man I used to know. You've lost your touch." Blah blah blah, and like he does something to him. Um, hey, if you ask me right now, what are some of Gangrel's moves? I don't think I can tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. I- I I don't think I can tell you. <laughs> anyway, he does one of his moves. Uh, maybe he pours some blood on him, uh, and then he's, he walks. He walks out of the ring. <clears throat> Corkscrew elbow drop, Northern yeah, okay. Life suplex, Tiger suplex, trapping suplex, finishing move, Impaler DDT. Impaler DDT. That just like a it's base. It's 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 like um it's like um dirty deeds or uh, <laughs> paradigm shift in a way. Yeah. Or like the nine nineteen sixteen 16 or whatever that Finn Balor does. It's basically you lift them and you do a DDT. Yeah. 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 OK. Let's see. Lift them. Drop Impaler, them. On the Impaler DDT. <clears throat> Gangrel kind so. of looks like uh that kind of looks like um, the singer sting in some of his uh, some of his older pictures. He's big. He's white. He's got blonde hair. <laughs> but so, um, yeah, it's I think that he like does, gives him a DDT. Um, and then this kind of gets gold. Caught myself again. This get, gets Dustin to get heated and he starts getting angry and he's kind of like, mm. And maybe he's like, uh, I'm going to I'm going to 
you know, he says, I'm going to, you know, Gangrel clearly was saying last week on commentary and, and in the ring that he doesn't think I still got it. I'm going to show him. I'm going to, I still got it. And the next time I see him, I'm going to kick his ass. Next time I see him, I'm going to kick his ass. And, and then they schedule, uh, Dustin to another match where he loses. Yes. Uh, um, or maybe it's a ta- oh, maybe it's a tag team match, right? And then they lose, and then Dustin takes kind of his anger out on Lee Johnson, who'd be his tag team partner. Mm-hmm. And say may- maybe they go up against, you know, uh, someone like uh, Varsity Blondes or, or, you know. Top Flight. Yeah, one of those teams where it's like they're clearly like, getting them to be better and they're getting on the rise and stuff so it's like not a big it's not like really a bummer that they lost but at the same time it's like you know clearly the veteran would feel like I should have we should have won that and then Mm -hmm. takes sort of takes it out on his partner and that's where then you could have like Cody come out and be like what's going on what's going on he's kind of like having like a breakdown in the ring and then on Mm -hmm. the on the screen, you could have Gangrel show up and kind of deliver like a really creepy monologue where he like hints at those things like you've lost your glitter. OK, nice. Yeah, <laughs> there's the brood. You've lost your way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's like you've lost your way, Goldie. Ah. Uh, and maybe he like hints. Maybe he does like a little hint at Stardust. Yes. You know, make fun of make fun of Cody's old old gimmick. Um, and, and, and I think we, we should definitely have a moment where he he snaps though, like Dustin like snaps and he's like he really like channels as much gold dust that we can do uh, without him literally being gold dust. Maybe he he like for a moment turns on Lee Johnson, sets him up in the corner, and hits him with the shattered dreams. And he's like, ah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> and you're like, I oh think, my god. I think then what happens is like maybe the next week you have or, or like the next big moment is that Dustin comes out in gold and then he beats someone. Yeah. But then it's that kind of yeah. thing of like he beats a face and you're kind of like, oh, like what's Dustin? What's what's gotten to Dustin? Like he's and yeah. he's maybe he attacks someone and he does and he like hits them after he pins them. And then Gangrel comes out. And he kind of, he kind of, and they square up. And it's this thing of like a real heel turn would then be like they shake hands or like they hug or something like that. But I think here, like Dustin, like takes a knee, and it seems as though like Gangrel has like gotten Dustin to be like kind of subservient. I know what's but coming here. Low blow. <laughs> low blow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like on his knees, like a, a broken man. And then he just fucking. Yeah. Like there could be. punch. May, maybe there's like two weeks where like gold dust or fuck. Dustin comes out with kind of like the gold dust like moniker and like he beats someone. And then everybody's sort of questioning like what's his, what are his morals? Like what is he, what, what is he like trying to do? And mm-hmm. then I think, and then maybe like we see Gangrel up in the stands or something, and he's like, "Yes, yes, yes. like that yes. sort of thing." And then the next week that happens, where it's like clearly Dustin makes the choice of like, "No, screw you, Gangrel. I'm gonna, yeah, you know, I'm I I know who I am. I know what I am." And so then when they do finally face on Dynamite or at a pay per view or something, um, he's gonna be back into his like. Dustin Rhodes, the natural attire. And maybe yeah, just yeah, yeah. like maybe now there's just some elements layered in of gold dust, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And I think uh during his losing streak, I think Gangrella like well should like plant things for like Dustin to discover, like of gold dust uh attire or like of just weird stuff. Like they're like uh you know the the big like white scarf that Goldust would wear and like the jackets and stuff like he would be putting that around. I, I in my mind I was like you should like trap Dustin in a sex dungeon. No. <laughs> <laughs> and he's no. like ah. Um, but like yeah, just like it's just weird stuff. 
mm-hmm. just kind of like appearing and and it's it's kind of this thing where it's like oh i keep seeing all these things they're giving me flashbacks of like who i used to be when i when i was a contender um i think and then what i think it leads to is like okay low blows them and it's clear that like okay maybe dustin now has kind of like a mean side to him but he's mm. clearly like he's not turning and now and he sees like what gangrel's been doing to him maybe then afterwards dustin cuts a promo talks about how like gangrel is trying to get into his head but he knows who yeah. he truly is and maybe all along it's just that he had to accept uh accept his past and not try to like maybe he just didn't feel like he had accepted like where he came from and what his yeah. past was but now he now he knows exactly where he wants to be what he needs to do and that ultimately is to kick gangrel's ass <laughs> yeah to kick gangrel's ass uh no yeah that's i think that's really good for him to be like i i tried to hide it away especially mm. when i came to AEW because i wanted people to respect me and not think of me as this weirdo this this bizarro gimmick like i wanted to just detach myself away from that and and just lo- and lock it away so that nobody would know about it yeah a new generation of wrestling fans would forget that name that i used to go by the identity that that used to be be ridiculed they used to be joked at i wanted to be dustin again but in in doing that he realized that he had to come to terms with everything that he had learned in his previous iterations and put it all together to become a better dustin rhodes natural Mm -hmm. and then of course he kicks gangrel's ass (laughs) i think i think then what transpires is he challenges gangrel Mm -hmm. I think you could probably have like a normal match but then I think it ends not like cleanly yeah okay Um, I think you gotta have Gangrel bust out the spitting blood yeah oh maybe that's how it ends maybe it's like a his face uh, it's like a re- it's a red mist uh, finish. Yeah. Um, and then I think it like falls out into a brawl or something like that. And then I think it's that Dustin. Uh, I think then he goes, "All right, Gangrel, you want to play? You uh, you want to play? Like you want me to play your games? Okay. I've been down this road before." Mm. Um, you this might have worked on a this might have worked on a um you know less experienced more uh um uh what's the word i'm looking for not wise the opposite mm. like naive 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 da- naive dustin Rhodes. but i i know i know when if you want to beat them you have to join them and then he challenges <laughs> him to like either like the first AEW coffin match or some sort of new like cinematic match that they can do where it's like I don't know like an insane asylum match like something that's like weird yeah where they can like where they like can kind of like get really weird with it um and that way you can play you can you know edit it and make it you know, a, like, you know, a cinematic match where you can really play into like them, like beating the sh- beating the shit out of each other and, yeah. and like doing like crazy bit, uh, crazy spots and stuff. Kind of like the Sting and Darby Allen match with against Team Taz. Like <clears throat> you like you have that ability where it's just like, yeah, it's just it's either this like weird stipulation or you go into like bringing back something that's like really sort of classic in wrestling like a coffin match i like i like the coffin match i think that's so great because if dustin gets in it like this the uh 
the, the results of this could create a big fallout, right? Like if Gangrel beats Dustin Rhodes and he puts him in the coffin, you think maybe he'll be reborn again as like Gold Dust or Goldie, and then Gangrel would have an ally. But if if Dustin wins, he can put Gangrel in the coffin and maybe like bury the coffin underground so that Gangrel is just gone. You know, like that's that's how he is getting rid of Gangrel. Mm-hmm. Uh, which would also help write him off TV because you know can't have Gangrel all the time. Gangrel in small doses. <laughs> I think you could still end up making it a. You could either make it like a real match or you can make it a cinematic match. Obviously, the easy well, like sort of mm, cop out. I wouldn't say cop out necessarily, but like you could make it a, a, a cinematic match. and It would be very, very well done. Mm. Um, and you could have it in like a church, which would be very yeah. like, weird symbology and like sacrilegious <laughs> <laughs> or, or like you could have it in a great. Well, you know, don't want to do a. a, a yeah. The graveyard do a, match. And do a boneyard match. <laughs> boneyard match. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think you could play really well into the, um, into the shared history, playing into a lot of like the weirdness of both their characters and personalities. It's and a sex dungeon casket match, brother. No, I think it's not. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Eh. Oh, but, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, it's like it either could be on TV and that would be kind of crazy. Um, No, it has to be on a pay-per-view. I meant, we I have meant, to do this. By TV, I meant like in front of an audience. Oh, like in front of a crowd, like, 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 you, like, I mean, what you could. It could be like a mix where it's kind of like st- stadium stampede where it's real, but like it mm. goes backstage into like a lot of weird stuff. I don't know. Oh, what, what do you think is the better direction? Like totally filmed and edited separately or like r- ends begins and ends in front of real people i think that it maybe be maybe begins as a cinematic match and then it ends in front of an audience because i think it would i think it would be good to like transition it to maybe the casket is like in the ring and maybe he closes it and and he has to lock it and then that's the end of the match and then and and light you, it you on could, fire like, Oh fuck it! Why not? Shit, we gotta we gotta make up for our, our dinky explosion at Revolution. So let's go all in. Let's let's set up this casket in the middle of the ring so that obviously Gangrel can just sit in there and then like pull the trap door so he falls underneath the ring and then they can just light that shit on fire. I like it. I think that's pretty cool. I, I like that too. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You have this story of basically yeah, like <laughs> I love that it's. Like if you when you break it down into like one like main point, it's like this is Dustin Rhodes midlife crisis. <laughs> it's the it's the Dustin Rhodes midlife crisis story featuring a little bit of a vampire magic, if you will. Um, and <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I I I like it. Like I think I think like yeah, it's silly enough, but it also like has some sort of a, a dramatic um, real life gravitas and drama to it. Um, well, it's also because yeah, it's, I don't know if this is what Richie was imagining, but uh, this is what we have uh, concocted up in our uh, strange minds. Well, I think it's fun solely because it's like you have the real life sort of like you have like the real life thing of like, yeah, you're a veteran wrestler mm. coming to accept like who you are and like what exactly you want to do. And like, you have these past characters and stuff like, who are you really? What do you want your legacy to be? All that sort of stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. Are people just going to remember you as this like character for the rest of your life? Um, But then to, because it's not just like, Oh yeah, this past character, you know, of, you know, it's not like, it's like a, it's not like it's like um, I'm trying to think of like a character, like a person that had like a character that was more like normal, you know, <laughs> normal. Well, it's like 
you know, edge with like the radar superstar. It's like you can look back and be like, you did some pretty shitty stuff, dude. Um, <laughs> but then also you, you are have, a bad guy. But also like John Cena with like Doctor of Thugonomics. Like it's not really yeah. like a character. It was a character that was kind of a dick bag, but also like people liked and then some people hated and then like mm. the character evolved. But like, you know, Dustin's the character of Goldust is weird. So how do you touch on that in any way well you do it with a weird character like gangrel where it's like yeah the only way to allow it to feel real is to have that suspension of disbelief and thus then by having gangrel be the one to be like let's bring the old you back out like then you can deal with those real feelings of dustin being like should i just go back to that is that what i'm good at is that the only like way I can be good anymore, like that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, who am, who am I as a wrestler now in 2021? Um, do I have to rely on this gimmick? Is that what my career was? Is this gimmick propelling me forward? Am I really even a good wrestler as Dustin wrote? And this feud of course proves that he is, but he has to come to terms with the lessons he's learned as gold dust and as his previous iterations so he can put it all together and become a new better dustin Rhodes, a new better sensei for the nightmare factory and to bury gangrel once and for all <laughs> could be a good way of gangrel being like one final one final like thing like one final yeah feud, yeah one, one final, final run yeah. yeah yeah and we get to see a lot of drinking blood everybody we want this feud to happen so that Gangrel could just fill up his wine glass with blood and and drink it all the time uh, on network television. There we go. <laughs> we well, also want to see the Impaler DDT. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be cool too. Um, but there we go. I think that I think that calls it for our booking mm. of Gangrel versus Dustin Rhodes in AEW. Um, please yes. let us know. Uh, either in the comments of the podcast or online, while you would have booked Gangrel versus Dustin Rhodes, or if, you know, should Dustin bring back Gold Dust? Uh, what other way would you want to see Gangrel be brought into AEW? Those sort of things. Let us know. Um, mm -hmm. To finish off the podcast, we got our question of the week and our match recommendation. Mm -hmm. Uh as always, you can submit your questions that you want to have featured on the podcast and have us answer. Uh, you can either submit them on social media, uh, in the comments of the podcast, or by submitting them on our website, unknownairfilms.com slash book it, Vince. And we'll answer them here. Just like this one, Anthony, that we got this week, which is a fun one. The question is, if you were to make a dodgeball team of wrestlers... Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. would you pick? All right, easy. So I'm Let's going to pick three. Let's do three or four. Three, four, 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 four plus us because yes. it would be like five people, right? So me, I would of course be the weakest link uh, because I'm not a professional athlete. Um, but I'm going to pick the best of the best of athletes uh, across the brands to populate my team which would include Bianca Belair, of course. Damn it, you took, you took mine. <laughs> is my first pick. I was going to say, uh, I was going to say Bianca too. And then I would pick John Silver because it would be funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be, he's probably, yeah. And he's probably good at dodgeball. I'm, I'm going to assume that he's good at dodgeball. Um, uh, he's, he's a, yeah, he's a fucking meaty, meaty dude. So he probably can throw gotta, pretty hard. You got to have he's like, small. Yeah, so you can exactly. Dodge. You, gotta, you gotta have a wild card, and I think that John Silver is mm -hmm. a great wild card. I would. Um, so we got so you got Bianca Belair, who's kind of, who is like you know, she's regarded as the fastest, the quickest, the meanest, the toughest, all that stuff. Mm. Then you got John Silver. Mm -hmm. I think we already talked card. about that. Mm -hmm. I think then you need like a big dude. I think you need I need you need someone yes. who a is going to throw hard, but then also is like, mm -hmm. like intimidation. I think, and then, that's why I would be selecting Luchasaurus. 
Fair <laughs> enough. I would probably yes. personally put. I probably would go with Wardlow, personally. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yes. That's good. That's reasonable. But at the same time, if it's not necessarily current day wrestlers and it's past wrestlers, I'd probably go. With oh. Batista. I'd probably go with Batista. You know, Dave Batista probably is a pretty good dodgeball player. Okay, so I have three people right now, so I get one. I get one more. One more. Who could that possibly be? Well, so okay, you mm. got bit, you got a, you got a, a tank essentially. Yeah, yeah. You got like super quick on their feet, agile. You got mm. wild card crazy. Mm. Um, another another trope is either you go for like super team captain, unless yeah. that's gonna be you. No. Or <laughs> or you go for like underdog. Or really unexpectedly to be good, like those kind of those kind of tropes. Yeah, I like unexpectedly to be good. That's a, that's a fun one for me. Um, unexpectedly to be good on my team, of course, would be Akira Tazawa. Akira Tazawa. <laughs> Akira Tazawa. John Silver. I feel like Bianca Akira Tazawa. <laughs> I feel like Akira Tozawa would just have his own team of just ninjas. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly why I'm having him on my team because it's a it's an extra advantage of added ninjas throwing dodgeballs from other parts of the arena. Um. <laughs> I'd probably go with like I'd probably go with let's see uh, someone that you would never expect to be good. Kurt uh, Stallion. <laughs> no, I feel like Kurt, I feel like Kurt Stallion would be like. I'm I feel like he'd be like a team captain. Yeah, yeah. You know? I would go with like I'd go with like Marco Stunt. Oh, there's one that I did not consider. Marco Stunt. Where it's like he's small and like and he's like yeah, he's small and tiny and everybody's like, "Nah, he'll be fine." But then he's like super dodging stuff and then like he's, he just magically has like a rocket arm. <laughs> yeah, he's he's feisty, you know. The, yeah. the the level of compete is very has, he's got a high dodgeball work rate too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but yeah, <clears throat> there you go. So that's that's uh that's Anthony's team and some of my picks yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Let us who know are the rest if, of uh, who are who are the rest of your picks is my question. Oh well, like, no, I w- I would have gone with Bianca Belair. I already said yeah, yeah, yeah. I already Wardlow. said Wardlow, Margot Stunt. I probably go mm. with if what what a and Batista. Oh, uh, BT, uh, Batista Wardlow would be like my two like if I were right, to pick right. like a tank person. Tanks, I guess tanks. wild. I guess wild card. I mean, I kind of would either want to pick like someone like Otis, or yeah. or uh, or like R Truth because I think that'd just be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Otis is too big of a target, man. He's <laughs> He's fast, yeah, but, but like he's too big of a target. But he could like drop down and like do the worm, and he <laughs> yeah, just dodging, dodging by doing the worm. Yeah, or or like it his hit it, it, he like make it hit his the ball would like hit his stomach purposely, and he'd like bounce it off, and then someone would like catch it. So then it technically didn't touch oh, the floor, so the person would be out. That sort oh. of thing. You're thinking about advanced schemes <laughs> and oh, and I'm playmaking. Thinking, I'm thinking three <laughs> steps ahead. This three is 40 ahead. chess. 40 <laughs> of chess do- of dodgeball. <laughs> oh my god! There we go. Amazing. Let us know. Let us know who you would pick to be on your dodgeball team uh, of wrestlers. Um, yeah, let us know online. Uh, I'd love to read those. Um, mm-hmm. And finally, to finish off the episode. Anthony, it's your week to give us a match recommendation. Which yes. match are you recommending for people to go and watch? Okay, to foreshadow uh, our next episode, the match that I would love everybody to watch is Mankind versus Shawn Michaels at In Your House Mind Games 1996. And this is, uh, I, th- I think it's underrated as one of Mick Foley's uh, best matches because it's at the point where uh, we uh, as the wrestling fans would have thought that Mick Foley was just a hardcore guy. We, d- we didn't really know if he could, he could really wrestle and he really does wrestle in this match. So boom, that one right there, mankind. 
and uh, the old Sean Daniels. The old Heartbreak Kid. Yes, awesome. sir. Perfect. Go and watch that. As always, we uh, link to all of our match recommendations on our website, so you can check them all out there. But mm-hmm. that's going to mm-hmm. do it for us today. Thank you all very much for watching and or listening to the podcast. If you want to follow anything else that we do here at Unknown Error, you can do so by looking us up online at UE underscore films. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can follow myself personally on Twitter and Instagram at Barton underscore Menet. You can follow Mr. Anthony Hall. At Hall and Jokes on Instagram and Twitter. But also, don't forget... To send us your best Jim Ross impersonations <laughs> at Book It Vince Pod on Twitter. Please, please help us be better Jim Rosses. <laughs> I would love to see someone do like an impeccable Jim Ross impression. That'd be and so even true. if you don't think it's good, it is 100% better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Uh, but thank you so much for listening. Stay safe out there. Go watch some wrestling. And we'll catch you next time. To sweet. <laughs>